you know, this this film had good messages. Um, a lot of things you should take out from this film and apply to your life. Uh, the plot was okay, but I think more or less the intriguing part is that it's based or inspired by true events. So, yeah, let's talk about it. Let's jump into my review of the new film, The Ravine. What's up, folks, and welcome back to the channel today for another review. And today we're going to be reviewing the film The Ravine, which is coming to theaters on demand digital May 6th. Now, yeah, this film, um, I, I've, I've heard about this film some time ago. I think it had like a world premiere last year um, and whatnot. Um, the cast, I'm familiar with some of the members of the cast. A uh, huge fan of one particular person of the cast, or two particular people of the cast, I say I'm huge fans of. Um, but overall, you know, I'm always intrigued by films that are inspired by true events. Um, you know, that means because most of the time the source material is really juicy, meaty, and, and, and the fact that, you know, you get folks to be able to tell a story and, and, and bring it to the attention of folks, I think there's like sort of a, a, a passion or a desire behind it. So like the motivation in, in the film work, uh, it just, it's, it's a little bit always extra pep in the step with it. You know what I mean? If, if you catch what I'm saying, like, you know, it's like, Hey, I want people to understand or, or, or relate to this story. So, like, we're going to make sure we do an effort into bringing it to as many eyes as possible. And that's kind of like, you know, where I started at with the review. Now, first, I'm going to say that um, the film is about two hours. I absolutely feels like it drags much longer than it needs to. But in saving grace of the of the film, I think that it's really the messages that are derived from this film. I think they're good, likely messages um you know talking about uh morals talking a little bit about ethics um principle like a lot of good things that people should build on foundation and then beyond that you can start tapping into the spiritual aspect of it uh, which i also think are very important whether you are religious or not i think they do have relevant aspects to all um, and that's like, you know, heaven and hell, whether you believe in that or not, but darkness and light, I think everybody kind of ba tries to find balance in their life. And that's kind of where that goes, uh, you know, goes down and their free will, another element of, of life. And, and that I think is super important, but also I think another thing is about judging, <laughs> um, closure, making peace of closure, all sorts of different things that you kind of can get from this film, but Let's talk about exactly what's going on in the film. So Akron, Ohio, a town very, you know, everybody knows Akron's from where LeBron's from. But um, the town, you know, on a peaceful, what was going to be a peaceful day, uh, wakes up to find out about a story of Rachel Turner and her son who was murdered, um, her son Evan. And it was a brutal murder. It was, it was horrendous. Um, a, a night lamp. Uh, a pair of scissors, a knife, a night lamp, a knife, and scissors. I feel like I blurred it all together. Um, but then after that as well, too, come to find out that Danny Turner was found in his car in the bottom of a, of a ravine uh, where he has taken his own life. So tragedy all over, and they're trying to make sense to everything to kind of get an understanding of how what everyone perceived to be a loving father and husband suddenly commits suicide. Um, and then all the other horrendous crimes uh, uh, and that what he uh, is accused of. So, like, it's a lot, you know. And, 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 and I think, you know, in this story, they dive down the psychology of Danny Turner. And then they start to tap into the ideology as to, like, why would he do such a thing? And and in the story, you know, you're, we're surrounded by all his loved ones, friends and family um, kind of going back down memory lane and nostalgia to kind of understand who he was as a person. Was he truly struggling with darkness or was he as good as everybody uh, as he appeared to be on surface level? You know, did he actually have mental troubles or was he actually, you know, or was this not him? You know, did he actually do it? What was the motivation behind it and so on? So like that's sort of the beginning slash middle part of this film is understanding more about Danny Turner um, and, 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 and then even going back to his wife and Rachel and, 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 and her son, you know, understanding, you know, what they went through that night of, of, of this horrendous murder and their family dynamic and Rachel's 
importance to her ones around her. You know, everyone could speak so highly about her and whatnot and who would want to do anything to her and whatnot. So, like, you know, basic things that you would expect in, the, in a situation like this. A full-blown investigation, um, all different people involved, um, and everyone just wanting to know the truth behind it. You know, trying to make peace of everything that's kind of going on. So, the film starts off very intense. I mean, you're starting off with Danny and the moments of him taking his own life and just the emotions and the performance here is just really, really edge of your seat because you're just kind of like, what is happening? You know what I mean? Um, and, you know, and understanding what one may be feeling at that moment of wanting to do this, you know, um, the complications in his life and, and you know, potentially not being able to handle everything at, at, at bay. It's, it's a lot of different things that are kind of bounced around about what may have one to be at that point and want to commit suicide and whatnot. And everybody's just trying to understand the motivation and, and, and just the facts behind everything. You know what I mean? That now goes into some of my favorite characters in this film. And that goes to, uh, played by Eric Dane and Terry Polo, the wife, um, the husband and wife couple of the Bianchis, Mitch and Carol. They're, they're closely connected to this family. And, you know, Mitch is super, duper motivated to understand what's happening with that. He's obsessed, if you may, if I may ask, um, in trying to find truth to this. Because he's just like, this, it's not, Danny, it doesn't make sense, you know? Um, and Carol, you know, I think more from a religious standpoint, but also just as a good friend, um... I think she just also wants to understand, like, why Rachel, you know, what happened in this household for that to happen. And then they're, they're a couple, you know, and, and the two of them trying to help each other out and understand that. First of all, Terry Polo, who is from Meet the Parents and from um, The Fosters and, and, um, and Good Trouble, some of my favorite shows, uh, is fantastic. She's a tremendous actress. And then Eric Dane from Euphoria is also fantastic. They have good chemistry together, very organic. Um, um, and, and very electric at times because there has to be a little bit of that kind of going on with all the abundance of emotions that's going on. So like they really work good together, you know, um, I'll take a step back from saying organic. I, 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 you definitely feel their emotion together, but I like how it doesn't feel totally natural. Should I add to them working together feels organic as if like they're good friends, but like the characters is like. It's like a piece of a puzzle trying to fit in with one another. And eventually maybe it works out and whatnot, but that's part of the story. Cause the third act of this film I feel kind of takes a, a, a different narrative. And again, it, it focuses on afterlife, heaven and hell, forgiveness, darkness and light, and free will, you know? And and while those things are kind of embedded throughout the entire film, it was truly the conversation about the two of them about meaning what does it mean to find closure about this and to move on. And I think that was, you know, a very important thing. Um, Leslie Uggins, uh, who plays Joanna, she's like a prophet in this, who's just fantastic, who's also in Deadpool, um, and a bunch of other different things as well, too. Uh, her, her character is like the religious standpoint to this, understanding, um, core principles, I didn't even say core principles, just understanding, uh, a lot of good messages and teachings about dealing with grief dealing with trauma almost like a therapist of one side but coming more from a religious standpoint and uh, she kind of aids the events of things that happen you know they got this little soup spiritual supernatural element which was her calling as to why she was kind of blessed with these abilities to kind of like see and feel things about folks and whatnot um, her, 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 this addition of this character to this film actually added a very unique element to it. Uh, I probably could have did without the supernatural stuff, but like I get what the message and importance of it. Um, and I think it's like the consciousness of this film. So it, it was important to that extent, but like, you know, but, um, yeah, you, you know, overall, you know, this film wasn't so much about the plots. It wasn't so much about the events that happened. I think it's really about the messages you take from it and understanding those messages and being able to kind of apply those to your life. And I think, you know, when you're talking about forgiveness and dealing with grief, dealing with trauma, 
um, you can even go as far as saying empathy um, in the situation. I think that this film tackles a lot of these messages and really um, is for the viewers to take those and, and, and either have conversations with things outside of this or make peace with things that they've probably been battling with, battling with for years because, you know, it's not good to hold on to these things. And I think that Joanna, the character Joanna, speaks to that about having to let things go because if you're struggling with things for too long, then you may turn to you know the the dark and that's typically not a good thing that that more battle of light versus dark is 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 is, is not an easy battle and you got to try to age yourself as best as you can to try to get through these things so anyway this is the ravine check it out again um digital on demand theaters may 6th jump in the comments let me know your thoughts about this when you do and as always stay tuned for more reviews very soon